and the data that um, is generated by intermediate jobs as well, like I explained in the previous uh, uh, slide, that you have to write a chain of uh, jobs uh, for uh, achieving your analytical um, objective. Uh, and the data that comes uh, out of each of uh, the job is written to the disk. Right? It's a very, very expensive process, writing to the disk and then reading a path from uh, the disk. But uh, the Spark uh, unified enrollment uh, can uh, have this intermediate result uh, stored in uh, the memory and then uh, the further uh, task, further processing can access directly from the memory, which makes it much, much efficient uh, uh, than uh, a normal Hadoop map to this uh, way of uh, the processing. So uh, it does uh, processing um, uh, in memory uh, and also it supports different workloads. It can uh, uh, process a batch kind of uh, workloads. It can process interactive real-time kind of uh, workloads um, as well, um, uh, which includes uh, the streaming uh, data uh, as well, which uh, we typically face um, in uh, the Twitter, or Facebook kind of uh, 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 you know, data sources. Uh, and then um, it supports uh, the functional uh, programming uh, paradigm. So functional programming paradigm is uh, uh, you know different from the object-oriented programming uh, that uh, uh, we have been seeing in uh, Java and um, in other languages. It is more expressive. Uh, uh, it expresses how the data uh, needs to be uh, processed in terms of data, in terms of the transformations, rather than uh, uh, what needs to be done, uh, like we see in our uh, other uh, programming uh, languages. So uh, it uses uh, the functional programming um, uh, paradigm, uh, which is uh, very good for uh, data analysis and data processing uh, jobs. And it also uh, supports, uh, the API supports uh, writing uh, the programs 